The old saying goes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. For America, two adversaries are joining forces to wage war against our Western culture. And as Michael Yosef explains, there's only one way to win this battle. Watch this. Judeo-Christian values are under siege. Free speech is under attack. And our country seems to be more divided than ever before. Michael Youssef is a social and cultural expert. He's also the pastor of Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia. He says there are destructive forces in and outside our country, attempting to silence Christians and destroy America's founding principles. In his book, The Hidden Enemy, Dr. Youssef takes a look at the biggest threat to modern day civilization and highlights the steps to build a brighter future for us and the next generation. With us now is Dr. Michael Youssef, uh, and we welcome him to the seven. My dear friend, good to have you back with so us. So good to be back with you, Pat. Thank good you. to see you. Thank you. You grew up, you were an Egyptian Coptic. Right. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, my ancestors were all Copts. I'm a third generation Protestant, but uh, my, uh, you know, as you know, Pat, the Christians have been in Egypt for 2,000 years, yeah. and they were the vast majority, 85% of the population until the Islamic invasion came from Arabia in the middle of the 700s. And, uh, and then, of course, they invaded not only Egypt, but all Christian lands in Lebanon and North Africa. And, and they, that's what they called the first jihad. Yeah. Well, uh, they, they killed people ruthlessly, didn't they? Well, they did. They gave them a lot of alternatives. They said, if you're a Christian, you can pay hefty taxes yeah. in the order to survive. And, and people be, a, the be a dimmy. Yeah, and become a dimmy. Yeah. But if you're not... Uh, off with your head. It was that way. And that's how it was in the beginning, yes. And uh, then the second, in what they call the second jihad, which is the 1400s, when the Turks came all the way to Vienna. And so that's what they now are thinking about the third jihad and their writings and talking about the third jihad, which is going to be taking over Europe. Even the prince of Saudi Arabia recently here in the United States mm -hmm. said the Muslim Brotherhood have designs to turn Europe into an Islamic continent by 2025, and he's warning the West, the Prince of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Michael, why do you think the American people don't, you know, understand that threat? I mean, if you say anything like, well, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're Islamophobe. racist, Islamophobe, yeah. 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 Well, what's wrong with us? I wrecked my brains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be 70 this year, so yeah. I've been around and I've been looking, I've been studying. The only thing I can see it is in this, from a spiritual realm uh -huh. is that there's blindness falling uh, upon Americans and some evangelicals mm -hmm. who have bought into this, you know, political correctness. And uh, it's like somebody said to me, he said, God brought you out of Egypt so you can really be a, a thorn in the side of yeah. American evangelicals yeah. to wake them up and realize what an incredible heritage you have. And you need to protect it at any cost and don't be apathetic. In fact, the book, The, the Hidden Enemy, is not the, the secular, militant secularism or militant Islam. These are enemies we know. The hidden enemy is the apathetic Christian. Really? Yeah. And, and so that's what I'm saying. Wake up in time before it's too late. Well, well, what is this hidden enemy? You, you talk about liberalism and some of the forces that are going on, the so-called political correctness. It's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's enervating us. I mean, just sapping our, our spiritual life. Absolutely. And, and we are intimidated by that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. I mean, there's some, uh, the ACLU would go after a bunch of kids in high school who want a, a room to pray or have a Bible study before or after school. But they're absolutely silent when it comes to Muslims in schools, whether it be in Texas or San Diego, insisting on leaving classes at 12 noon so they can have the noon prayer. There's nothing. They would say nothing about that. They, they never go after them. Fear. Uh, the former president of uh, PBC, we were, I was asked, as he was retired, and, uh, retiring, and they said, uh, why do you beat up on Christians? And he never said anything about militant Islam. He said, well, you know, Christians have broad shoulders. I'm quoting literally. Mm -hmm. But if we say something negative about medicine, they're going to show up at Oxford Street with guns and grenades. <laughs> yeah. so fear worked. You see, that's the problem. We, 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 fear had, had worked. We said, we'll not be uh, afraid. We will do this and we'll do this. But in reality, if you look at all the secular movements and secular groups, uh, feminist groups, uh, their darling is 
uh, a, 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 an Islamist, because the difference between Muslims and Islamists. I have Muslim friends who I met with President Sisi uh, last mm -hmm. November for three hours. Great man, and um, he is more anti-militant Islam than we are. And he was asking why America and, and Europe are not taking our lead and calling the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mr. President, I believe it's fear. And so I, I think we in the West, unless we rise up and wake, wake up and rise up mm -hmm. in time, yeah. our children and grandchildren are gonna have a hard time. Do you think uh, President Obama, by the way, was tending in this direction that he wanted to push America, you know? <clears throat> Uh, oh, absolutely. He, yeah. was, uh, he was the leader in chief in this. I mean, he supported wholeheartedly the Muslim Brotherhood government in Egypt. Mm. And only when that government uh, brought the country to its knees economically, socially, mm -hmm. in every other way, um, and 33 million people took to the streets uh, as a result of the prayers of the faithful Christians. Yeah. Um, and he was not very happy about it. They said, Muslim Brotherhood, they're good people. And they were killing Christians in the daylight in the streets. They were burning churches. They were doing all kinds of things. But Obama seemed to think that's just okay. Well, the Brotherhood was the fountainhead of all these radical movements. Like exactly. Obama. They're the granddaddies of them all. Yeah. Hassan al-Banna, who founded back in the 1920s, is, is the guy who basically started this whole thing, and he got his inspiration from the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And now the Saudi government is denouncing the Wahhabis and yeah. saying, we don't want them anymore. And so the, 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 the spiritual thing, you're talking about how things overseas and God is blessing overseas yeah, yeah. a little earlier. And, and I'm seeing things like in Egypt or Saudi Arabia, and, 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 and they're the ones who are throwing away the yoke of jihadism, mm -hmm. but in the West, we're West. welcoming them. And because the Christians created that vacuum, you know, as mm -hmm. you know, Europe, now all the churches are museums. Yeah, exactly. And, and the believers just took, you know, basically took their hands off. Do you think, is Europe going to go Muslim, you think? That's what the Prince of Saudi Arabia said, believe it or not, to yeah. this just a couple of days ago in an interview. And he said, you Americans need to know that it is a design of the Muslim Brotherhood to turn the continent of Europe into an Islamic continent in less than 20 years' time. It's his own words, not me. So I always uh, I love it when somebody else says things, not you know, just me. I, I know this is a little bit uh, out of line, but uh, uh, Princess Diana was so loved in England, but she was going to marry... Uh, uh, Saudi, yeah. A, a Saudi who, who was a Muslim, and she would probably have converted for Islam, and that would have brought England into that orbit. I mean, uh, Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. right now, there are so many forces in England and in France yeah. that are uh, in the Labour Party, particularly in England, mm -hmm. as so many Muslims and as many Islamists, not just Muslims, who are involved in, in and they, they've taken over, for example, the Board of Education in Birmingham, England. Mm. And the first thing they did is they scrubbed the textbooks of the Holocaust. Oh. And, and all that Prime Minister Cameron says at the time, that's unacceptable. <laughs> so yeah. This is not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. They're literally taking your country away from you. And it's got to be more serious well, than this. They, they, tell us about Sharia. What, what is that going to do? And they, some of those cities in England, you mentioned Birmingham, yep. are going yep. with Sharia law, aren't they? Well, I was speaking to a very prominent group of Brits, and I said, well, as you all know, this was last year, uh, you have over 100 Sharia courts already in the country. They said, no, 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 200. Really? 200, 200 Sharia courts. And there are sections called no-go no zones where policemen cannot come in or non-Muslim can come in. So uh, a man can beat his wife or daughter, you know, if he suspects them doing something wrong. And if... For some reason, the policeman takes, you know, take him to a court, and they said, no, no, you have no jurisdiction over me. You need to send me to a Sharia court. So the judge, out of fear, of course, he sent him to Sharia court. And in the Sharia court, what does he say? Well, you need to obey the Quran. Make sure you beat her the right way and the right places. And I mean, it's just go home and be the lightly. That's horrible. <laughs> I mean, that's just what's happening in, 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 in Europe. And, and with some, for some strange reason, yeah. the church is just going to sleep.
And I'm talking about, you know, we, we can have all this kinds of, you know, wonderful music and stuff and we have big gathering, but in reality, we're not living the gospel. Mm -hmm. We're not literally walking in the truth and we just say, oh, it's love. We've we'll got to love each other. So we get love and wink at sin and allow sin to come and invade the church and look where we are. And if we keep going like this, you know, unless God intervenes and if yeah. God's people start praying, mm -hmm. because that's really the, the call of the book, uh, talking about the hidden enemy, the apathy, the, 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 the known enemies from outside and inside. But in, in the end, until God's people, as you have quoted earlier, mm -hmm. until my people get on their knees and begin to cry to God, it, it, things are going to get worse. I'll give you a quick example. In Egypt, yeah, right. when the Muslim Brotherhood came to power, we have a television a network called Kingdom Sat mm -hmm. in 160 million homes in the Arab world. It's in Arabic. Yeah. I got on the set and I pleaded with the Christian leaders. I said, I know you're under attack right now. You're in severe attack. Get on your knees and stop fight, quabbling with each other. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, one of the most senior Coptic bishops, whom I know, I visited him in 82, called the evangelicals. He's never met with him before. He called all pastors to come to the monastery and to pray. And when the people saw the leaders praying together mm -hmm. and not squabbling, they began to pray 24 hours a day. Prayer meetings were going on. Two o'clock in the morning, you couldn't get a seat in some churches mm -hmm. for prayer meetings. Yeah. And God heard and yeah. God answered and 33 million people took to the streets and they toppled the Muslim Brotherhood and gave us Sisi, who was a wonderful man. And, um, and now the country is really doing extremely well than yeah. like never before. And so God, we're seeing with our own eyes, now God answers prayers. <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the book is called The Hidden Enemy. You want to get a copy. Where, where, where can we get this? Well, it's every bookstore. Every bookstore. <laughs> right. It's in it's right. Amazon. It's leadingtheway.org. The, the, everywhere you can. This is a call for action. You ought to read it. And uh, Michael, we appreciate you. God bless you. Oh, we appreciate you, Pat. Thank Praying you. for you, man. Don't God stop. bless you. God bless you. Yeah.